Okay, so in this video I thought we'd take a look at my facility. Uh, as we go through, we'll look at some animals and I'll just kind of show you the way I've got set up and uh, what works for me. Uh, everybody's going to be different, but this is going to be an illustration of how I've got things. Uh, over here on the left, uh, I've got Vision Hatchling Racks. Um, so these are going to hold 60 tubs as they're set up now. Uh, these are the V18 tubs. Um, you can also change them and use uh, the V15s. So uh, I'm not using these now, but I set these up so you could see them. If you were to put three on each side, you could hold 90 of these tubs, which would hold 90 animals in a rack, or which is the V18s, as I said, or excuse me, V15s. V18s is going to hold 60 in a rack. I've got all my babies on this side. Um, we're getting towards the end of the 2019 season right now. Um, so these happen to be the animals I have for sale that are on uh, mice right now. Uh, animals in my collection that are still on mice. Um, these are uh, animals on rat pups from last year and some holdbacks I just bought. And then these are all holdbacks or animals that I purchased last year, uh, all on this side. Uh, back here, uh, these are old boa file racks um, that use the old uh, Rubbermaid tubs. Uh, I keep my uh, king snakes, clubrids in those. Other side of the room over here, uh, I've got vision racks on this side. Um, these would be the V70 racks. So turned sideways, it would hold the vision 70 or uh, like the ARS 70 tubs coming in lengthwise and it would hold 11. Whereas they're turned sideways this way, you can put in 22 of the uh, V35 tubs. So I've got them set up this way because I have a lot more adults and I need the extra space. Um, these are big enough that animals will breed in these. Uh, females will lay their eggs in here. Um, happens every year, not a problem. Come over here, take a look. You can see how much space there is. Um, so females are gonna be fine in here. Uh, a little bit of waste in the back there I gotta get out, which happens, um, but they breed fine in there. Moving over here, these are the um, ARS breeder racks. Um, these would be the same as the Vision 70 tubs or ARS 70s, I guess is what they call them. Uh, much longer tub. Uh, come on over and look in this one. You can see there's a lot more room for much bigger females. Uh, this is a big albino female. Uh, she's got plenty of room in here. Uh, breeding takes place in here. I always move the males to the female's cage uh, when they're locked up. Uh, they'll breed in here. She'll lay her eggs in here. Um, there's one up here that I just took off of eggs a couple days ago. Nope, it's not that one. It's this one. So you can see she still has her little nest area there. Um, still think she's on eggs because she hasn't been bathed yet. Uh, so I give them a couple days after they've laid their eggs and then I'll bathe the female. Um, just mild detergent and I'll uh, disinfect the tub, change out the bedding, and then get her back on feed again. Uh, the purpose of washing off the scent of the eggs is so she doesn't remain coiled like she is there and refuses to feed. I want her to not smell the eggs anymore and then she'll get back on feeding and that could buy me an extra couple months of getting her prepared for the next season. Uh, let's take a look again at some more animals, just randomly. Uh, I marked some different ones that I thought you might be interested in seeing. Uh, this little fellow over here is a fire inchy blade clown. Show his head to you. You can see the inchy head stamp there. Really nice. And he's still growing up. He hasn't shown any interest in females this year. Uh, so we'll try again for next year. But a really nice little snake. This was actually the first animal put up for auction to raise funds for a chase. Um, so I was really happy to get that. That was put up by Mike Brizzy Reptiles. So I'm happy to have him. Um, something else in the same size. Got a Mystic Potion male that I've moved. He's over there breeding. Um, this one's kind of neat. If you remember the old Atomic Fire animals from Mike Wilbanks, this is something very similar. If you look at the head here, you can see as you're looking at it, the left side of the head seems to be normal coloration. The right side, right down, split down the top of the head is all pale and washed out. So it's kind of like a half hypo, half patterned, half unpatterned animal. 
Um, this was much, much smaller a couple years ago. Justin Kubelka showed this in one of the uh, NARBC Arlington videos. Um, so you can compare that old video to this and see she's grown up quite a bit, um, but still not interested in breeding. Uh, she's under a thousand grams, so uh, we'll try her again next year as long as she keeps eating for me. Uh, let's look over here at some babies. Um, or let's do some holdbacks. Stuff I held back. This is probably my daughter's favorite snake. Oh, I need to put a water bowl back in here. My daughter named this girl Pearl. This is a fire piebald. She only has coloration on the head and a little bit on the neck there. Other than that, completely white. But a really nice snake. And I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you my seven-year-old named her Pearl. So, got to share that with you. Got to get a water bowl back in there, obviously. Uh, some other interesting holdbacks, maybe. Let's see, got a leopard clown. She needs some water. This is from Tom Harbin Reptiles. Really good guy. Fantastic snakes. Well, let's try some of the babies over here. Let's come back a ways, and there's an Xanthic Fire. I'm pretty known for these. I was the first person to create Xanthic Fires back in 2012, I believe it was. So this is a hatchling left from last year. Let's see if I got an Xanthic left. Yeah, we do. So we'll compare an Xanthic to an Xanthic Fire. Can you see both of these together there? Not cooperating this one over here for video, but there's Xanthic and Xanthic fire together. So you can see the fire much, much lighter and brighter and prevents the Xanthic from browning out when they get four or five years old. And let's look at something different. How about a colubrid? Raising up these little Applegate Pyros or Arizona Mountain King Snakes. Much more flighty and mobile than a ball python for sure, but pretty little snakes. This is a little female. As is typical, they don't want to hold still. Need a lot of hand over hand movement for them. And Let's look at one of the Kenyan sand boas. I believe her to be gravid. She's making a huge mess in here. And they're already a chunky snake to begin with. But if you look here, you can see the separation in the scales on the last half of the body. So I'm fairly confident that she's gravid. I'll try to be gentle with her, but move her around so you can see her pretty well there. Fantastic little snakes. And I just wanted something different. Um, having some boas, having live birth is pretty exciting since most of my career I've only had egg layers. Uh, I've got a couple others, but we'll just kind of stick with that one for now. Um, let's look at a Mexican black king snake since I mentioned those. Um, let's pull this girl out. See if she's going to be calm. They're constantly in feeding mode, but really great snakes. This is my favorite colubrid. This is a breeder female. I've got a nest box in there with her because she just had a pre-lay shed a couple days ago. Um, but I wasn't 100% positive. Is it pre-lay shed or um, still developing? So nest boxes, really simple. Just a shoe box. Cut a hole in the side. You could also cut a hole in the lid. And sphagnum moss, which she's trampled down. Just keep that moist. There's usually a lot more in there. She's spread it all over her tub. So I'm going to have to clean that and get some more in there. But that's where she'll lay. So those are all Mexican black king snakes there. Uh, let's look at a couple more holdbacks. Uh, nice pied. I'm raising up. She was for sale for a while, and since she's so low white, and most of my pieds are high white, 
I decided she needed to be held back. She's also het for albino, but very low white. So I thought I should probably keep this one since I'm trying to cross in so many different colors into my pieds. Held that one back. Um, our mahogany pied up here. Really nice. This is from Justin Kabulka Reptiles. Got lots of plans for him. Uh, let's take a look up at my green tree pythons. I uh, didn't even mention those before. Uh, there's a little girl up there. She's just about to start a shed. Not sure if you can zoom in on her and catch it without the bars in the way, but it's just starting to come off of her face. And then there's another female over here to the right. That's always in feeding mode. If you come around, she's on the left-hand side of the tub there. She's always looking for food. So she pretty much stays in that uh, pattern there. And let's look at some more big snakes here. Um, here's a lavender albino. She's hat for pied, so I'll be making dreamsicles with her. Really pretty girl. I don't know if cameras pick up lavender albinos very well, but uh, some nice purplish hues in the middle there. A couple different shades of yellow on the scales. Just really pretty animals. You can see I keep most of my breeder females on Reptichip. Should mention that. Um, the females that aren't developing follicles that aren't going to go this year, and my males I keep on Santa Chip. Um, let's see. She happens to be on the Santa Chip, so normally all mixed up. After they crawl around, they kind of impact it down a lot. But this is an Xanthic Fire female. Um, she is from 2013, so she's seven years old. You can see how well they hold the color having the fire in them. Uh, so since I know that she's not breeding this year, or at least yet, is not developing follicles, I keep her on the Santa chip because it's a lot easier to spot clean. And it's cost savings as well. All my males are kept on Santa chip. All my babies are on Santa chip unless they happen to show some uh, difficulty with shedding. Then I'm going to put them on the Repta chip because the increase in humidity is very helpful. Uh, but that's basically it. That's the way I've got my room set up. Uh, I've got a couple spare tubs sitting up top and everything. And in another room, I've got all my packaging materials, deli cups, and that kind of thing. Um, I just wanted to show you around my room and give you an idea how I set it up and everything you can squeeze into one bedroom in your house. Um, so thanks for watching the video.